Solving one-step inequalities really isn't any more difficult than solving one-step equations. By now you're pretty familiar with the equations like um, 3x equals 9, where you just divide both sides by 3 and you get x equals 3. You've done a number of these, you've done ones where you had to add or subtract. Um, the only difference now with inequalities is that they're not actually just a single answer. Your answers will be a whole range of numbers. So we're going to look at a couple of different types of examples, but I think you're going to find that it's not really any, anything new other than one very minor rule about multiplying or dividing by a negative. So let's take a look at a couple of different ideas here, a couple of different examples. Um, suppose we had y is greater than, um, actually let's do 2 plus y is greater than 6. And we want to find out what y can be, so we need to get rid of this 2. We have 2 being added to the variable, so we'll subtract it from both sides. That 2 will go away. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have y is greater than 6 minus 2, which is 4. So our answer, our range of answers, is y can be any number that's bigger than 4. And what that's saying is that as long as we put a number in that's bigger than 4 in place of y up here, this statement will be true. And we can see that if we were to put in anything smaller than 4, we'd be adding 2 to something that was too little to make it bigger than 6. If we put in anything bigger than 4, 5 or 6 or 7 or anything else, then we add that to 2, it's going to be bigger than 6, and this statement will be true. Now, if we want to graph this information and get a kind of a pictorial representation of it, we just find the number that we have, a, we have, we have it compared to, 4 in this case. We look at our sign. This sign doesn't say that it equals 4, just that it's greater than. So we draw an open circle at 4, and then we shade in what the variable can be. y can be anything bigger than 4, so we shade in anything bigger than 4. Now for our second example here, let's take one, um, let's say x plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. Actually, no, let's do x times 3 is less than or equal to 9. So just a little bit more of a variety there. So then to get rid of that times 3, we need to divide both sides by 3. So just like we would if it was an equation, divide by 3, the 3's cancel. Divide by 3, we get x is less than or equal to 3. So now we find 3. It says it's equal to this time, so we actually are going to color in that 3. I'm going to go just above the line so we don't get things confusing here. Color in the spot at 3, and then we shade off to the left, since it said x can be anything less than or equal to that. And we're shading in what the variable can be. Um, what if we had z over 2 is... Actually, let's even do z over negative 2 is greater than or equal to 4. So now we need to get rid of this negative 2. It's The variable is being divided by it, so the opposite would be to multiply by it. So our negative 2's cancel. 4 times negative 2 over here gives us z, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. But since we multiplied by a negative, this is the only difference between inequalities and equations as far as process. Since we multiplied by a negative, we switch the direction of this sign so now we have z is less than or equal to negative 8. So we come down over here to negative 8. It says it can be negative 8 also, so we're going to put a dot there. And then it's less than or equal to, so we're going to shade off to the left. It could be anything smaller than or equal to negative 8. So really, as you can see, all the rules you're used to using for equations will apply for inequalities. There really isn't anything new to learn other than this one rule that says, if you multiply or divide by a negative, switch the direction of the sign. That's it.